Step 2. Repeaters with encoding. In this step, we're going to discuss how we can use quantum error correction in the context of quantum communication. Before we do that, let's talk about what are the problems with 1G repeaters. So to, to remind you what the scheme looks like, for example, if we have four nodes, one, two, three, and four, first we need to establish uh, link level base pair entangled pairs between one and two, two and three, three and four. And in order to manage errors, we need multiple copies of these entangled pairs in order to purify them and increase their fidelity before we can uh, apply entanglement swapping and uh, stretch the entanglement to reach from node 1 to node 4. But a crucial part of a purification protocol is two-way classical communication. So here we're using three bell pairs because um, we're trying to detect both X and Z errors. So if nodes 1 and 2 want to engage in purification protocol, they need to measure uh, two of those three pairs. And they have to exchange classical information about the outcomes of the measurements. And they cannot proceed with their protocol until they receive this classical uh, information. That way they know whether they should keep the first pair or discard it. So for short distances, this two-way classical communication might not be such a huge problem. But what if you're trying to purify the end-to-end -end entanglement between nodes 1 and 4? Then the waiting time significantly increases. So longer distance means longer waiting time. And longer waiting time also means that uh, we are slowing down the rate of end-to-end -end bell, pair, uh, being, bell pairs being created. Furthermore, if the dis distance gets too long, then we have serial, serious issues with memory uh, decoherence because memory is a finite coherence times. And if the distance is too long, the nodes have to wait for the classical information to um, be exchanged, so the qubits are just decohering in the memories and they become completely useless um, to be, um, for, our, for our purposes. So is there a way of getting rid of these waiting times? Is there a way of getting rid of this two-way classical communication? And the answer is yes. And with the help of quantum error correction, we can do it. The general strategy for applying quantum error correction in the context of um, quantum communication is the following. First, we encode the logical qubits at each node. We saw how to do this in the first step. Step two is to apply a remote C node gate in order to create logical bell pairs shared between neighboring uh, nodes of the network. And step number three is to apply logical entanglement swapping in order to stretch this logical uh, entanglement between um, nodes that are further apart and that are not neighboring. Here, there is no purification. That means no two-way classical communication. We're going to demonstrate how this works with the use of the repetition code for bit flips, as we did in the first step. Know that everything that we say, the basic logic applies to also more complicated error correcting codes. So let's look at the first step, encoding of the logical qubits. Now each node needs to hold at least six physical qubits. The blue qubits are the memory qubits that we will use to create the logical um, uh, encoded qubits. And the gray qubits will be used to establish um, entanglement between the nodes. So let's see how we encode the, uh, the blue memory qubits. We're going to use the same encoding in the first step for the repetition code. Before we, we denoted the logical qubit with a subscript L, but often people use tilde above the zero or the one. And we're going to use the tilde as well, because it's going to save uh, quite a lot of space when we write some longer formulas. So our logical zero, tilde zero, is given by the following triplet, zero, 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 and our logical one is one, one, one. We prepare uh, the logical uh, qubit at node one in a superposition of the logical zero and the logical one. And node two is prepared just as the logical zero. The circuit that we apply at node one is the following. We prepare the first physical qubit in an equal superposition of the physical zero and one. And then we apply C node gates between the first qubit and the second qubit, and between the first qubit and the third qubit. This way we create the superposition that we need. Now, why are we doing this? It's because we're trying to um, apply a logical C node gate between the memory qubits at node 1 and memory qubits at node 2. If we do that, we will create an entangled uh, bell pair at the logical level. 
This is uh, our goal. We are trying to apply a logical C0 between the logical qubits. The first qubit is in the superposition of logical 0 and 1, and the second qubit is just logical 0. So if we apply the logical C0, what we get is a logical 0, 0 plus a logical 1, 1, which is our uh, known um, bell pair, but at the logical level. It's the logical phi plus. How do we do it? We do it with the help of transversal gates. If we are trying to apply a particular unitary gate u at the logical uh, level to a logical state, what we can do is we can apply this unitary to each physical qubit. This is known as transversal gates. For example, if we have single logical qubit, we can apply unitary u to every qubit, and what we get is the logical u applied to the logical state psi. If we are trying to apply a um, uh, logical uh, two-qubit gate transversely, for example a C0, we can do the following. We have our logical A, logical B, and we apply three C0 between the first pair of the first logical qubit and the first pair of the second logical qubit, and between the other remaining two pairs. Don't forget, this is very important, not all gates can be applied transversally. Although in this lesson we are only going to uh, deal with transversal gates, so you don't have to worry about that complication. So here is step number two in our strategy, the remote C0 gate. First, what we do is we create physical bell pairs between uh, node 1 and node 2 using the gray qubits, the gray ancilla qubits. Uh, here we are esta uh, establishing this phi plus bell pair. And then what we can do is we can run the following circuit between the memory qubit Q1, the first gray qubit of the bell pair, the second gray qubit of the bell pair, and the qubit Q2 of the memory at node 2. Running the following, following quantum circuit. We apply the C0 between Q1 and the first qubit of the bell pair, and we apply C0 at node 2 between the second qubit of the bell pair and Q2. And then we measure the qubits of the bell pair. The first qubit at node 1 is measured in the Z basis, and the second qubit at node 2 is measured at the, in the X basis. And we apply um, corrections if needed, depending on the outcomes of the measurement. This way we can apply a remote C0 between these two qubits that are located in the memories of node 1 and node 2. And now, in order to uh, complete our transversal C0 gate, we just have to do the same thing at the remaining uh, uh, pairs of the memories, between this pair and between the bottom pair over here. This way, we apply uh, the logical C0 gate in a transversal way using remote C0s, and we establish our link level logical bell pair between nodes 1 and 2. Once we have link level uh, entanglement, we can start to think about having multiple of these and joining them together with logical entanglement swaps at nodes 2 and 3. How do we do this logical entanglement swapping? That's the content of step 3. First, what we're going to do is we're going to apply op operations only at node 2. And in order to avoid any confusion, we're going to say that the uh, memory qubits on the left side of node 2 connected uh, to node 1 uh, in the form of logical bell pair uh, are A1, A2, A3. And uh, memory qubits on the right side of node 2 are B1, B2, B3. And what we do for every pair, A1, A, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, we're going to apply the following circuit. So first, we just apply a C0 gate. This is a regular physical C0 gate between qubits, let's say, A3 and B3. And then we're going to measure them in the X spaces for the qubits uh, that are part um, of the entanglement with node 1, and in the Z basis for the qubits on the right, which are part of the entanglement with node 3. Why that is? That's apparent if we write out the state in its full form. So we start with two logical uh, phi plus states shared between nodes 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, and then we apply three C nodes between A1, B1, and so on. And we obtain the following superposition. If you look closely, we can write this superposition uh, by splitting it into terms for node 1 and node 3. 
These terms are all the logical Bell pairs. It's either logical phi plus, logical phi minus, logical psi plus, or logical psi minus, written out over here, where we ignore normalization. And then we've got the states for node 2, for qubits, um, uh, qubits A and qubits B. Now you can see that if we can somehow measure them in logical X and logical Z, and let's say that we obtain a particular outcome, logical plus and logical zero, then we collapse the state shared between nodes 1 and 3 to be the logical phi plus. And now we understand why we have to measure qubits A in the X basis and qubits, Z, uh, qubits B in the Z basis. The logical X measurement is performed in the following way, by realizing that the logical plus can be written, written out uh, in terms of the states of the physical qubits in the following way, and logical minus in this way over here. So the crucial point to note here is that uh, a logical plus always contains an odd number of plus states. It's either 3 or 1, as we see in the superposition. The number of plus states for the logical uh, minus is even. It's either 0 or it's 2. So when we measure uh, qubits um, A in the uh, X basis, we either add all the number of plus states, meaning that we're collapsing onto the, log onto the logical plus, or if we measure odd number of plus states, we collapse onto the logical plus. If we measure an even number of plus states, we collapse onto the logical minus. Z measurements at the logical level are even simpler. Simply we get 3 times 0, which means we're collapsing onto the logical 0, or 3 times 1, which means we're collapsing onto the logical 1. And this way, we can also demonstrate why, uh, some, um, why the errors get suppressed. Consider that one of the, one of the uh, qubits uh, at each side gets flipped. So if we flip uh, one of the qubits that are part of this uh, uh, B group, then what we're going to measure is we're going to measure two correct outputs and one incorrect output. So remember, we're measuring these qubits in the Z basis. So when we measure two zeros and one one, we just have to take the majority vote and we project onto the, the logical zero state. This way, we are correcting a single bit flip error. And interestingly, the bit flip errors on the left-hand side of node two for the A qubits, they are completely unaffected by the bit flips because the error commutes with the measurement. So even if three bit flips occur on these qubits, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't introduce a logical error. So, what's the mathematical expression for the probability of the logical error? Well, logical error occurs when uh, these B qubits, two or more of them flip, so either two or three. And that happens with the following probability. It's three choose two times P squared for the case when two flip, or three choose three times P cubed when all of them flip. Now, if p is less than 1 and it's quite close to 0, then the leading order is just p squared, which is significantly smaller than p. And in this way, we see why bit flip errors get suppressed using this particular repetition code. Now, we've only worked with the repetition code, but all of these ideas, all of these three steps, also apply for more general codes, such as CSS code. This scheme uh, of, uh, for 2G repeaters was initially devised for such a code. This concludes our discussion of 2G repeaters. See you in the next step.